welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be looking at fertilisers. First of all we're going to have a look at what plants need to be able to grow. One thing that plants need to be able to grow is light from the sun. They use this as the energy um, in which to turn elements into carbohydrates in their leaves. I'm going to do that because I can open a string. Hi and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to look at fertilisers. First let's look at what plants require to be able to grow. Plants require light from the sun to be able to grow. They need carbon dioxide from the air. They need water which can fall as rain. And they also need elements in the form of nutrients. So they require nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium to be able to grow well. When plants die and decay and go into the ground, they can put these nutrients back into the soil. However, if we plant a, a field and we then harvest that crop, we're taking the plant out of the ground and we're taking the nutrients that are used as it is grown with it. That means that the soil is depleted of those nutrients and they need to be returned. Fertilisers are substances which we can put onto the ground to restore the elements which are required for healthy plant growth. Fertilisers have two requirements. They must contain at least one of the required elements, potassium, phosphorus or nitrogen, and different plants require different elements and different proportions of the elements. They must also be soluble so that they can be dissolved in water in the soil and then be taken into the plant. Have a look at page 8 of your data book to work out if these compounds here would be suitable as fertilisers. Pause the video now and try this question. So page 8 of the data book is the page which allows you to know if something is soluble or not. You can use other pages in the data book to work out what elements are present in each of these compounds. So first of all we have ammonium phosphate. This contains both nitrogen and phosphorus and is soluble, so would make a good fertiliser. We then have sodium nitrate. This contains nitrogen and is also soluble, so would be a fertiliser. We then have barium sulphate. This doesn't contain any of the required elements and it is also not soluble, so it would not be useful as a fertiliser. Potassium chloride contains potassium, which is one of the elements, and is also soluble, so it could be a fertiliser. However, aluminium phosphate, although it contains phosphorus, is not soluble, so it couldn't be used as a fertiliser. And finally, lithium carbonate, although soluble, doesn't contain any of the required elements and is therefore not a good fertiliser. So how do we make fertilisers? Ammonia is a nitrogen containing compound with the formula NH3. This can produce soluble salts when reacted with acids and therefore can be used for fertilizer production. Ammonia itself is a compound which is a colorless gas and it has a very distinct pungent smell. It will dissolve in water to produce a weakly alkaline solution. When reacted with an acid, ammonia will form, form a salt and that salt will generally be soluble and therefore be able to be used as a fertiliser as it will contain nitrogen and be soluble. For example, ammonia plus hydrochloric acid will produce ammonium chloride as a salt. Ammonia is produced during the Haber process. During the Haber process, nitrogen and hydrogen are combined to produce ammonia. You can see here the word and balanced equation. This process is reversible and therefore has a double headed arrow. This means that at the same time as the nitrogen and hydrogen combining to create ammonia, the ammonia is also breaking up to form nitrogen and hydrogen. This means that the yield can be lower. So how do we make sure we get enough ammonia? The forward reaction is very slow at low temperatures but at high temperatures the backward reaction takes over and this means that we don't get the yield of ammonia that we would desire. A moderately high temperature is used for this purpose. 
An iron catalyst is also used to improve the reaction rate. Nitric acid is another useful compound which is used to make fertilisers. It also makes soluble salts when reacted with bases. So nitric acid plus a base will give you salt and water. For example, nitric acid and potassium hydroxide would produce the fertiliser potassium nitrate containing both potassium and nitrogen and water. If you were to carry out this reaction, you would do a titration between nitric acid and potassium hydroxide to find the volumes required of each using an indicator. You would then repeat this titration without indicator to be able to produce a potassium nitrate solution. You would then evaporate off the water to leave behind potassium nitrate solid as a salt. The Oswald process is used to produce na potassium nitrate from ammonia. Ammonia and oxygen are first combined together um, over a platinum catalyst at 800 degrees. This is the catalytic oxidation of ammonia. By doing this, you produce nitrogen monoxide. Further oxygen is added into the reaction. And after the initial heating of the catalyst, this is an exothermic reaction, so it requires no more heating. Further oxygen is added to produce nitrogen dioxide. At this point, more oxygen is added and water. This allows us to produce nitric acid, HNO3. So in summary, fertilisers must contain at least one of the three elements required, nitrogen, potassium and phosphorus. Fertilisers must be soluble. Ammonia and nitric acid are two compounds that are often used to make fertilisers. Ammonia itself is produced using the Haber process and nitric acid is produced using the Oswald process. I hope that you found this video helpful. Please remember to subscribe and follow me on Twitter at Miss Adams Chem for regular updates on new videos. Bye for now.